it was so tender, all the juices coming out of it. Oh. Oh, can you see that? Juicy. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the Pitmaster University channel. I'm David Ong. So today we're going to be cooking hot and fast shorties. Now you guys will be used to seeing this but with a twist. This time we're doing it no wrap and we're doing it on a Weber for all the guys being requesting that we do a, a barbecue cook on the Weber. So we'll get to it straight into it guys. Let's bang on. Okay so now to trim the ribs. Now what you want to do if you're going to do this hot and fast, start off with just some decent ribs. Now you see that there's a fair whack of marbling there. You can do it with leaner ribs, but I recommend start off with some um, well marbled ribs if you're just getting used to this. Um, because yeah, there's nowhere to hide today. We're going hot and fast. And um, yeah, if you're trying this with leaner ribs, um, uh, you may have a bit of failure. So, well, especially when you first start off, like you can do this with leaner ribs, absolutely, you'll do it all the time. Um, but, you know, uh, if you haven't got the experience, uh, what you want to do is uh, go the extra mile and go get some marbled ribs. Now, if you ever see ribs that have got basically uh, bones, layer of meat, this white line in the middle, and then another layer of meat on top, you want to actually avoid that, okay? Because um, they're usually butchers trying to hide that they've got crappy ribs. Okay, you just want the single layer of meat close to the bone. And then what you want to do is you want to take off this top section here. Um, now, it's because this isn't just membrane, there's fat. Now, what I do is I'll basically get it going and then I'll angle my knife on about a 10 to 15 degree angle. And then I should be able to get that off relatively quickly and ideally all in one piece. Now for anyone that's seen my other beef rib recipe, you will know that uh, this doesn't go to waste. So it doesn't matter how much meat's left on this, because this doesn't go to waste. This, this ends up being the best pit master snack you're ever gonna have, because um, it's ready midway through cooking these ribs. Okay, and then we'll take this a little bit off. And that's what I call beef crackle. Now I'm sure someone's done it before, given it a different name, we call it beef crackle. Okay, now if you can see here, there's, there's a bit of a membrane there, but you'll see there as well, uh, the meat goes from quite thick over here to thin over here. Now, there's gonna be a, uh, over here where the muscle joins, uh, so you might not be able to get all this fat off, but try get as much fat off as you can, because you're gonna find that you're gonna have, uh, the rub's not gonna stick to fat, or membrane as well as it's gonna to stick to just the meat. Um, okay, so get as much of it as you can out. Okay, take this little section out here. Okay, and then any thick fat isn't gonna render, so take as much off as you can. Okay, there's some bit, there's a bit at the back here. I'm just gonna carve that out from there, like that. Okay. And then, that's pretty much it. I might tidy that a little bit up, a little bit more up. But you see, this is where two muscles join here. Uh, don't carve into that, because you're gonna end up having a bit of meat and then a bit of fat. You can maybe trim it off a little bit more. You know, there's a little bit more to come off here. Um, but I personally wouldn't bother. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna season this. Oh, I forgot. Before I go on, just score the back. Now, don't take this membrane off, because a rib isn't a rib without the bone. So if you've got no, basically if, the, if you've got no membrane on the back, uh, the ribs will fall out very easily from the bone, and it's an old wives tale that uh, fall off the bone means that it's perfectly done. That is total nonsense. Um, um, you can have perfectly cooked ribs and the bone's still intact. You can have tough ribs. Uh, and, and the ribs have fallen out. So, especially if you've taken that membrane out. So, don't take that membrane out. Okay, now I'm gonna salt these. Okay. Quite heavily. Now, don't go too heavily, because what you might notice, 
that flap's gonna, that stuff flap's gonna come off. Okay. If you sold it too heavily, you're actually gonna get uh, almost like a uh, uh, what would you say? Uh, you're gonna get like the salt cake, and and then it'll actually uh, you get this crust form, and the crust will actually fall off with all of your bark if you salt it too much. And I personally use just sacks of cooking salt. Don't go out and spend in big bucks for the Aussies. Um, go, go spend in big bucks on uh, things like uh, your kosher salt and stuff like that. It's a nonsense that you need that. You'll just get perfectly good results off using uh, a cheap cooking salt and it's heaps cheaper than something like sacks, uh, something like kosher salt. Now with the pepper, go quite hard. Okay, this will help with your bark. Now you don't need to use binders. Trust me on this. Try without, try with, um, especially if you're using this, this, this method, try without, and all you have to do is pat it in, push it in. All right? You don't need to rub it in. Just push it in. Push it in like that. Okay, might put a bit more. It looks like a lot, guys. But all you guys whinge to me, oh, it hasn't got any bark, hasn't got any bark. This will help give you the best bark you've ever had. Go extremely heavy like that. Okay, now I'm gonna chuck some on here. It's gonna be a bit hard to do on camera from here. I'll flip this over. Okay. Put that on there like that. Don't have to worry so much on the back on the membrane. Um, Okay, and then what you can do with the rest of it, so there's some um, rub on there that's fallen off. All right, you can mop that up with the ribs. But if you have a look at that, push, push that in, look at the coverage on that. No binders, no nothing, no mustard, none of that crap, okay? This is perfectly fine. I've got to miss a couple of spots. And then we're gonna stick that straight into the Weber kettle at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, that's us done. No need to rub hours before, just before while you're waiting the, for the, 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 uh, the pit, the Weber to come up to temperature. It's perfect time to, to trim and rub your meat. Cool, now what we're gonna do now, shift this over. I'm just going to season the beef crackle. So what you can do, a bit of excess on my hands there, perfect. Should have taken the wedding ring off. Okay. What you do is you just mop all that up. And then that goes, so there's no waste whatsoever. Okay, a little bit of meat there. That'll be my little pit master treat. Bit of rub on that. And then that's, your beef crackle, perfectly fine. Look at the ribs again if you want to see the coverage. See that guys? That's what I'm looking for, okay? Nice solid covering of pepper and a fair whack of salt, not too much, and that'll help you with your bark. So we're gonna stick that in the kettle now and we'll come back shortly. Okay guys, so you wanna load this up. Now you can use charcoal, you can use heat beads, briquettes, whatever you wanna use, I find. Um, uh, the charcoal puts out a lot more BTUs, aka heat and energy, uh, so I prefer that and I prefer the flavour as well. Um, but load, the, load this up fully because you want to get this quite hot now. You don't, don't have to use one of these, I've got a JG offset plate. Um, I find it really handy and really useful to use. Uh, you don't need one of those, you can just put some, some brick pavers or something similar if you'd like. Um, just basically to, to create uh, something to hold the charcoal up and to keep it to one side. So you want that fully loaded. Okay guys, here we go. Let's chuck these on. So what I'm gonna do, roll up a bowl of foil. 
and I'm going to pop that in the middle there now. I'm going to push that down a bit. Okay, so push this down a bit. I need to flip that over, sorry guys. It's going to stick some gloves on. Shuffle these char this charcoal around. So just remember guys, 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. Okay, if you're new at this, you can play around with a little, a little lower than that. Okay, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to plonk a bit of this wood on there, just on top like that. And I'm going to stick these ribs on. Okay, so I've done another one of these off camera for you. I'm going to plonk this down like that. Actually, I'm going to swap these around because this one's a bit thicker. Plonk these ones down like that. And I'll plonk these ones like that. Okay. I'm going to stick this beef crackle, or soon to be beef crackle, over here, over here any of the scraps, put it at the front so I can snack on those, put that over here, wipe up some of this, plonk it here, these make crispy crackly snacks during the cook, okay, okay, then we'll pop this down here, now we're going to pop the lid on and I'm just going to check it every hour, Make sure 180 degrees um, or 350 Fahrenheit. And we'll come back in about an hour's time. Oh, just chucked another, just chucked another uh, bit of wood on, and I've got this little nugget. My oh, goodness, this is some of the beef crackle. Um, yeah, it's just uh, this one's done already. <laughs> That's so good. All right, we're gonna come back check on this in a moment. Okay guys, it's been two hours. Ooh. Listen to that sizzle. Oh, you should smell it. Oh, some of this beef crackle is looking like it might need some num numbing on. Okay. Going nicely, you can see some nice pullback from the bones there. We're gonna pop the lid back on. I might steal some of this beef crackle and we'll come back again shortly. Okay guys, it's been three hours now. Excuse my dirty weather, it's a cooker, not a looker. Let's have a look at that. Oh, she's getting close. Okay, so that's looking beautiful. Okay, so she's starting to dip in temperature a bit. What's actually happened there, some of this wood's fallen over. So I'm just gonna push some of that across. And then we should get some extra burn out of that. So what actually happened there guys, I'll show you in a sec, is basically some of the charcoal's fallen over and it's created a disconnect. So there's not a continuum of charcoal, so uh, basically the fire started to drop a bit. So you just have to keep an eye on that. I'm gonna chuck that, plonk that on there now for some more smoke flavor. Okay, so what we'll do now guys, we're gonna come back, and I'm probably gonna check it in about half an hour's time, because it's a three hour mark. She's probably gonna start to get close I'm going to start checking that for tenderness, but we'll come back then.
Okay, guys, time to test it. Now, what we're looking for is for this to slide in and out like a hot knife does butter. Zero resistance. It shouldn't have to push it in and it shouldn't have to push it out, just pull it out. So it shouldn't have to put any force going in and you shouldn't have to put any force on it going out. Same with the back one. That one needs a little bit more, guys. Okay? Um, um, but this one was close to the fire. You might want to rotate them in between, but um, yeah, so that's done. I'm going to rest those now. I'm going to air rest those. So basically, I'm going to pull them out here uh, and then just rest them on the countertop and wait until they get to about 100, uh, 145 degrees Fahrenheit before I slice into them. But yeah, apologize as well, guys, for the old uh, the old Weber that I've got here. Um, it's a bit dirty, but uh, that's, that's getting, I'm giving that away this weekend. So um, we've got a new one for our classes, but um, okay, let's go to get uh, uh, to the bit where we slice these up and you can see how gorgeous these are. Okay guys, it's been rested about 15-20 minutes. We're going to slice into it now. Because of the heavy bark, you may want to go with a serrated knife to get through the bark. Okay, here we go. Oh, that bark. Oh. <laughs> If I can get through this bark, <laughs> here we go. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that? <laughs> that is so sexy. Look at that bark. Oh, look how juicy that is. You can see it glistening in there. Oh my goodness, that's so, oh. Looks so tender, all the juice is coming out of it. Oh. <laughs> Guys, hot and fast, especially with beef ribs, is the way to go. It is so quick and so awesome. And that bark. Now you can have too much bark sometimes. So I'll let you guys weigh up what you guys prefer most. But that is spectacular. Alright, let's eat it. Alrighty guys, now the moment of truth. Check this out. Oh, can you see that? Juicy. The bark. <laughs> okay guys, here we go. Now the only problem with this, when it's got good bark like this, it can be a little hard to get through the bark with your teeth. I'm going to give it a shot. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. That bark. Mmm. Look at the bark that came off. Mmm. Actually, look at that. Oh, I could eat that by itself. Mmm. That's magnificent. Oh. Mmm. So juicy. So much flavour, you know. It's a hard choice between this one or my other three and a half hour one. I think you're gonna have to have a go with both guys. Oh look at that. Oh so good. Here we go. Mmm. 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 Delicious guys. <laughs> so good. Alrighty. Alrighty guys, as per the usual, we're gonna have Sophie try this. She doesn't like the bark yet. It's a little bit salty for her. But here we go. You try this, Sophie, you wanna grab that off me? I'm gonna try that, pop that in your mouth. Is that good? <laughs> Is that nice? Yeah? So do you like that or crunch pork better? Crunch pork and that. Oh, you like both? 
Ah, that's cool. Okay, so say bye bye, Sophie. Bye bye. Say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.